Hello, apes. How are you doing? Well, today, I'm going to go ahead and go through a PowerPoint I made going through all the year, since first semester to now, to prepare you for the AP exam. So let's get started. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and open the PowerPoint. You see we're all apes here. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So ionizing radiation is having enough energy to knock electrons from atoms forming ions capable of causing cancer. Um, basically self-examinatory, kind of like UV rays. So high quality energy is energy that is that is concentrated like it, it can it can actually do work and you know do things. But low quality energy is kind of dispersed, it's disorganized. It's just like kind of like heat in the ocean, the air, wind. Um, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, but it may be converted from one form to another, um, such as in the second law of thermodynamics, which states when energy is changed from one form to another, some useful energy is always degraded into a lower quality energy. So say in the uh, e ecosystem diagram, or in, um, the heat dispersion diagram, um, so the producers get 10% of the energy from the sun. 90% of that, it doesn't just disappear because it cannot be created or destroyed. So it, it turns into heat. That's how that works. So the natural radioactive decay is the un unstable or unstable radioisotopes. And when they decay, they release gamma rays and alpha and beta particles. <coughs> A half-life is the time it takes for one-half the mass of a radioisotope to decay. Estimate of how long a radioactive isotope must be stored until it decays to a safe level is approximately 10 half-lives, which is quite a while depending on which substance we're speaking of. Nuclear fission. Okay, here's a cool way to remember it. You see the F-I-S-S-I-O-N? There are two S's, so you can actually pretend like they're going apart. So this is the nuclear of isotopes split apart. So they're they're going apart. They're separate directions. Um, and they they uh, change uh, the mass of it is usually uh, dispersed as well. But nuclear fusion is when they come together to get a heavier mass. So um, yeah, remember fusion is when it comes together and fission is when they go apart. So ore is a rock that contains a large enough concentration of mineral making it profitable to mine. This is what those miners are looking for. Organic fertilizer is is long lasting because the organic remains have to break down, be decomposed by bacteria and stuff like that. So it lasts longer than some of the other fertilizers because of this natural property. And the best solution to energy shortage is conservation, um, and that increases, and, and also to increase efficiency. Surface mining is when they, they kind of like mountaintop mining. I'm sure you guys talked about that when they blow off the mountaintops to uh, extract the coal. Um, examples like this and also open pit mining where they dig a really big pit in a uh, in an area to extract the coal which is um, or which they can profit from it's cheaper than underground mining and can remove more minerals and it's also less harmful to workers than underground mining now hummus is organic dark material remaining after decomposition by microorganisms if you can see in this diagram O, A, B, and C. Um, C is like the really hard stuff. B is a little bit lighter. A is a little lighter. But O, um, the O level is the kind of stuff you, you actually see on the ground. Um, at, you know, just walking on it. That's what you're actually walking on, organic dark matter. I mean, material. So leaching. The removal of dissolved materials from soil by moving water downwards. So... If there's stuff in the soil in the O or A horizon, 
those materials were moved when those materials moved down by getting rained on or whatnot, that's called leaching. Now, the alluvulation layer is what forms in the B horizon, and that's like all where all the leached material goes. So loam is the perfect agricultural soil with equal portions of sand, silt, and clay. If you remember the um, soil triangle, you'll recall that sometimes it can be too sandy, permeable, too too much clay, which means it'll like suck up a whole bunch of stuff and and um, some other examples. Conservation is when you actually use resources, but it's responsible. But you're being responsible with resources. Like you can drink Coke cans, but you should recycle them. But preservation is saying, okay, I'm going to preserve the, these this forest because I don't want um, any life to be disrupted because of um, um <clears throat> excuse me I just I just want to set aside the forest so that uh, no one will cut it down and the e uh, ecosystems can continue parts of the hydrologic cycle which is like their water cycle water evaporates and then it condensates not only just from evaporation and respiration but also transpiration which is when trees um, through the photosynthesis process they they make water so that sort of evaporates what's actually called transpiration and it goes up into a cloud and then precipitation is when it falls back down and uh, it's it's like rain and then infiltration is when it goes into the ground but runoff is when it runs off from aside to go somewhere else so the water goes to another place from where it originally fell from precipitation but remember infiltration is when it goes into the ground excuse me an aquifer is any water bearing layer in the ground and the cone of depression is remember when you lower the water table around a pumping well Salt water intrusion usually happens near the coast. And what happens here is when people over pump groundwater, it can cause salt water to move into the aquifer. And then you'd have to, I mean, it gets into a lot, a whole, whole bunch of mess if this happens because you can't drink salt water because it's not healthy. I mean, it's not good for you. So you can't, you know, drink that. And then if you try to use reverse osmosis, that can be extremely expensive. So we usually just try to avoid salt water intrusion. And so stands for the El Nino Southern Oscillation, and it is a sea song of air pressure over the South Pacific, which changes um, the following things. The height of the ocean on both sides, it causes Peruvian upwellings to cease and causes temperature disturbances, which interrupts the world's weather. So um, it basically just... So if you if there are two sides of the um, Pacific Ocean, like usually the left side near near the left side is usually really um, near Asia is really high. So in, in in El Nino year, it all kinds of kind of settles out, and that changes the weather and the and the trade winds and all this kind of stuff. It's crazy. During an El Nino will year, the trade winds weaken and warm waters move back to South America. And that causes temperature disturbances. But during a non-El Nino year, easterly trade winds and ocean currents pull warm water in the western Pacific. And since it's warm water, they want to kind of, kind of equalize. So the cold water has to come up from the bottom with all these nutrients um, so that these organisms can live. Um... And, and these are called upwellings. Nitrogen fixing is when, okay, so nitrogen in the air cannot be used directly by plants. So bacteria basically take um, the nitrogen in the air and they make it into ammonia so that the plants can actually use it. Ammonification is 
when decomposers convert organic waste into ammonia for plant use. So the difference is bacteria converts nitrogen into ammonia, but decomposers convert organic waste, which is like poop from cows or whatnot. Um, the decomposers come on that and convert it into ammonia. Nitrification is when ammonia is converted into nitrate ions so that they can use that. And denitrification is when the ammonia turns back into nitrogen so that it can go back into the nitrogen cycle, which is shown here. You see the nitrogen in, um, atmosphere, in the atmosphere is fixed by bacteria. And also um, decomposers uh, turn it into ammo ammonia as well. And then nitrification happens and makes um, nitrates and nitrites. And then the de denitrification is when it goes back into the atmospheres into. Phosphorus does not circulate as easily as nitrogen because it does not exist as a gas, but is released by w the weathering of phosphate rocks. I'm going to take a break here, but in the next video, I'll continue. So I'll see you next time.